This is CBC Here and Now. Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. I'm Anthony Germain. And I'm Carolyn Stokes. A man accused of breaking into a St. John's pharmacy with a backhoe says he's not guilty. And it's the strangest and latest development in a break and enter that took place on New Year's Day. Ryan Cook has more. 6 a.m. New Year's Day, police showed up here at Dominion on Black Marsh Road to find a pretty strange sight. They believe that a backhoe had torn a wall in the building near the drugstore. The backhoe bandit had gone inside and stolen a cache of medication, including narcotics. Four days later, 39-year-old Daryl Deneef was arrested. Now fast forward to today, Deneef's lawyer told a judge that his client intends to plead not guilty. Deneef is headed for a three-day trial starting on March 11. There was another backhoe break in a few days before the New Year's Day heist. That was at Lawton's on Topsail Road, but Deneef is only facing charges for the Dominion break-in. Heavy equipment operators have told CBC News that whoever did this certainly knew their way around a backhoe. Whether or not that person was Daryl Deneef, have to wait until trial. Ryan Cook, CBC News, St. John's. A single vehicle crash has claimed the life of a woman on Newfoundland's south coast. RCMP say the car rolled over just before 8 o'clock in the morning. The 45-year-old woman from Seal Cove was trapped inside the vehicle. Volunteer firefighters used the jaws of life to free her. She was taken to hospital in Harbour Breton, but she died of her injuries. Less than a month in, and officials say most of the oil has been removed from the Manolis L. The ship sank near Change Islands in 1985. An estimated 150,000 liters of oil was trapped on board, and five years ago, it started leaking into the Atlantic. $15 million in federal money is going towards the cleanup. Now the bulk of the oil is out of the ocean, sitting in containers. Crews expect to finish their work by mid-September, and when they do, the wreck will be sealed off and left at the bottom. Don't give up on electricity as we approach the era of Muskrat Falls. That's the message from the Premier as he tries to assuage concerns about soaring power rates. Dwight Ball doubled down on his commitment this week that ratepayers and taxpayers will not shoulder the burden of the billions borrowed to construct the troubled hydro project. He hopes his message will calm nerves as completion of Muskrat Falls approaches and debt repayment begins in less than three years. Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, no matter where you go, we're looking at options of getting off electricity. That is not what we wanted. That would make a very bad situation much worse. So our objective is to keep the demand on electricity right now, electrify whatever we can in this province using that power, even some of it to, uh, to sell in surplus power. Ball says allowing electricity rates to double would be catastrophic for the province's economy, but he's not seeing how he plans to deliver affordable and predictable rates. He says the first step is to get the Public Utilities Board involved to determine a rate structure once Muskrat Falls is online. Well, the manganese problem is persisting in St. John's. Officials aren't sure when tap water on the west end will get back to normal. Seven schools are in the affected area. When they open up next week, there's a plan to supply bottled water. Labatt's is in the clear so far, but is now checking its beer production every hour. In the meantime, the city's four fill-up stations remain open, and anyone with mobility issues who is unable to travel to a station to collect water is asked to, to call 311. A few more salmon rivers on the island have reopened for catch and release fishing ahead of the long weekend. In a news release, DFO says the rivers are in zone 12 and 13. Those rivers are on the west coast and the southwest coast, and they include Burnt Island, Grand Codroy, Robinsons, and Little Barishwa Brook. Most salmon rivers on the island were closed earlier this summer due to warm water and low salmon return rates. The SPCA on the West Coast wants people to adopt a pet, but says some are going about it the wrong way. Volunteers comb online ads for available dogs and cats, and they've got some concerns. Here now's Colleen Connors swung by the SPCA to learn more. Every cage is full. There are over 20 kittens and even more full-grown cats waiting for permanent homes. Adopting here is much better than looking on Facebook. So we watch for the ads on uh, social media and what have you. And hopefully these people that are trying to find homes for their kittens will turn them into us because 
if we can take them or one of the other rescues because we all qualify uh, the people that would adopt these kittens. The SPCA says shopping online for pets is risky. Staff monitor classified sites daily, watching for mistakes. We're working in tandem with the, the other rescues and, and they watch and we watch and we talk to each other and uh, we're doing the best that we can right now to keep the population down, but it's a never-ending story. If you adopt through the shelter, the animals are neutered and the staff conduct background checks on new pet owners. Online adoption? That's use at your own risk. Well, we will contact them and uh, we will offer to take the puppies or we will offer to take the kittens from them. We encourage them and uh, suggest that they definitely get their animal uh, fixed or altered. Adopting wild kittens online usually leads to more unwanted kittens in the area. The whole reason for this extra social media watch is to make sure that there's not too many cats roaming around the city. They don't want them to overpopulate because there just isn't a whole lot of room here for all these unwanted animals. Colleen Connors, CBC News, Corner Brook. Well, do you recognize this? It's Rollins Cross, downtown St. John's. We'll reminisce with a police officer who used to be posted there. It's coming up.
Welcome back to Here and Now. Before we get to the weather, though, we have an update for you on that fundraiser for the family of Nevaeh Denai. It's right on that beautiful Tuesday evening. If you were watching, you know that I was live from the Wedgwood Cafe where chefs were serving up support and some delicious food with all of the proceeds going to the family of that uh, young cancer advocate, Nevaeh. The total they raised, almost $8,000, and that's for uh, Nevaeh's family. Fantastic. Yeah, just an update for you because uh, it was a busy night and uh, it was a gorgeous night as far as the weather went. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of looking at them cooking all that stuff up, Carol. I suspect a lot of people are thinking about making that kind of cooking on the grill <laughs> over the, the next three days. Yeah. yeah Did you get to have any? I had one morsel ah. of, uh, of a Moroccan lamb dish. Oh that Jonathan Richter made. He was actually on here and now. That was fantastic. Nice. I, I didn't want to leave a tiny little piece though. Mm -hmm. CBC rules, you know. Yeah. Only allowed one little piece. <laughs> I have to claim the rest, so. <laughs> well, you know what else is fantastic? Hmm? The weekend weather is looking fantastic. A little on the cool side, but uh, yeah, it's looking, it's actually eerily quiet weather-wise. Let's have a look uh, with the highs today. Yes, yeah, St. John's was at 18 degrees, but if you were in St. John's, you'd probably notice that that 18 degrees was early this morning. Things were cooling down all day long. And uh, yeah, Badger got up to 16 degrees and along the coast of Labrador, there are temperatures in the low uh, to mid teens. So we do have a frost advisory in effect for tonight for uh, these areas. Temperatures dipping down very, very low. So if you have any frost sensitive plants, you'll want to bring them in or cover them up. And this is kind of why it's going to be so cold tonight. There's not really much on the go. There's no clouds. Everything is really clear and we have those cold northerly winds. So this is the picture for tonight. No precipitation anywhere. Um, a few clouds in the sky, but mostly clear and temperatures getting down to below 10 degrees in most places. So yeah, we're in for a chilly evening. If you're heading out tonight, you will want a sweater and a coat for sure. So looking into a uh, Saturday, things are looking fabulous, really clear, have a little bit of shower action here, but staying off the coast of the west. So yeah, looking really good, but a bit on the cool side. If you're in the east, we're going to start the day with lots of sunshine and uh, temperatures around 11 degrees, but you can see those northeasterly winds. Uh, very, very cool. We could get up to around 17 degrees, but most of the day it's going to feel more like 14 or 15 degrees and then down to 13 in the evening. So yeah, 17 as the high for St. John's and the, the south coast, southern part of the Avalon uh, tomorrow, as well as Marystown. As we head into central areas, a bit warmer in the 20s there with lots of sunshine on the west coast. Same story, sunshine everywhere and temperatures even a little bit warmer still along the straits. 21 degrees in Mary's Harbor with lots of sunshine. So yeah, well, that's pretty much the name of the game for tomorrow is sunshine for everyone. Labrador actually looking a little bit warmer than parts of the island. So Saturday night we do have some showers moving through parts of Labrador and could see some spits there along the, the south coast of the island. But overall things are looking like another great day on Saturday. 20 degrees for central areas, 21 in the west, 17. So still a bit on the chillier side for uh, the east, but still nice and clear. Eastern Labrador with that system coming through, it's going to be really windy as well. So some showers and some high winds uh, to contend with there, but still 23 degrees, not so bad. So as we head into the holiday Monday, it's a very similar story. Once again, not very much happening. Uh, sun and cloud on the island, getting up to a nice cozy 25 degrees for central areas, 20 uh, in the east and for Labrador, sun and cloud across the board. So it's almost a boring forecast really. And and then this is the picture for the next five uh, days for the east. We're go going back into uh, the 20s into Tuesday, but cooling down there on Wednesday. Similar story for central areas, just sun and cloud for pretty much everywhere. Some cooler overnight lows there on Tuesday evening for eastern Labrador. A few showers possible for Tuesday and as well for western Labrador. But overall, the forecast is looking pretty good for the next few days. Anthony? That wasn't a boring forecast. You're too hard on yourself. <laughs> as far as the weather goes today, though, uh, two guys certainly had a fine day to finish their cross-country cycle. Two men from Montreal just pedaled the length of Canada, all of it for a very good cause. Here now is Ryan Brockerville. Met up with them today in St. John's. <laughs> Pedaling the last few hundred meters. These two gentlemen have biked further than most. But it's all for a good cause. 
we're feeling great. great. This is the uh, the realization of a dream. So uh, we managed to cycle across Canada and to raise money for a good cause, which is prostate cancer research for our local hospital. Manny Alonso and Louis Nassim set out from Victoria, BC in May. Their goal? To bike across Canada and to raise $50,000 for prostate cancer research. They have family who've been affected and they want men to get tested. If you catch it early, uh, then you have a good chance of curing it. And one in seven men in Canada will get prostate cancer. They saw the whole country, but of course, we left our mark. And Newfoundland, boy, you got, you got hills. We did uh, maybe 1,400 kilometers in Newfoundland and we feel it. <laughs> Rocky but Harbor. You have a I province. remember Rocky Harbor for a long time after this. It was great going down, but when we had to come back, it was hell. We've got tough terrain, they said, but kind hearts. People have been amazing throughout, um, everywhere, but you know, Newfoundland has been especially good to us. We had people take us into their houses and give us supper. We have people making uh, spur of the moment donations for our cause. Um, it's been very emotional. Alonzo and Nassim were just shy of their target, raising more than $47,000. The two will now be taking some well-earned time off, getting out of Canada and going on a European vacation with their wives. Ryan Brockerville, CBC News, St. John's. Well, the Rollins Cross intersection has turned out the lights and at least temporarily turned into a roundabout. Amid all that downtown construction, there are complaints over just how clumsy it is for pedestrians on the sidewalks. But today, the city said it will be installing an accessibility ramp to remedy the problem. Someone who has a long history with Rollins Cross is retired RNC officer Gary Brown. As an officer, that uh, area used to be his beat, and today it's where he lives, and he's done a significant amount of research on it. Rollins Cross has been around since 1840, believe it or not, and in 1903 when they bought in the uh, gas engines here, that's when it started getting really busy, and it's a, a, a high traffic thoroughfare of military road going way back. But I would say in, in the latter number of years, during the wartime, Second World War, 1938 to 44, 45, it was exceptionally busy with military vehicles. And then as St. John's expanded, and uh, it became really busy because people use this as a thoroughfare coming from the northeast of St. John's and outlying areas to downtown and all the schools still and the traffic areas here and the ho there's hotels in the, in the vicinity. I love this area. I'm a, a very proud Newfoundlander and I love St. John's, the history of this great old uh, city and Rollins Cross uh, and Military Road, of course, and, and all the areas, Monkstown Road and our beautiful Bannerman Park. There's such a place, play, the history of St. John's, and, and Rollins Cross is important, not only for the vehicles, but you look at the amount of pedestrian traffic that's coming up now from this beautifully refurbished Bannerman Park, with you have a swimming pool, you have a ballpark, and it's, it's unbelievable. So you've got to now try to get probably hundreds of, uh, of foot traffic, pedestrian traffic, and vehicles through this intersection without traffic lights now. I'm really wondering and wishing in them again. Good luck. Here's a live look at the Narrows through the camera on top of the rooms in St. John's. Yep, doesn't look too windy. And stick around, take a look at who's celebrating birthdays and anniversaries.
Voters in Windsor Lake go to the polls on Thursday, September the 20th, about a year before the rest of us. Some issues in the district are issues for us all. The candidates have accepted a here and now invitation for a by-election debate. This is a critical by-election. When the opportunity comes up, you step up. Young people are worried about their future in this province. Our troubled economy, an aging population, muskrat falls and other big issues. The Windsor Lake by-election debate Thursday, September the 6th on Here and Now, also on Facebook Live and our YouTube channel. We'll hope you tune in for that debate uh, next Thursday, but today it's Friday. Yeah, so that means it's time to find out who's celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Happy 50th anniversary to Mary and Dern Brown of Placentia Bay, now living in St. John's. And a happy 69th wedding anniversary to Joseph and Blanche Masters of Red Harbor. And it's a golden anniversary for Gerald and Phyllis Pinson of Musgrave Harbor. Congratulations. Happy 50th anniversary also to Nelson and Shirley Vokey in Bay Vert. Melita Barnes is celebrating her 94th birthday. She's from Coombs Cove and now lives in Lewisport. Happy 91st birthday to Marie Wheaton. Marie is from Fredericton, Newfoundland, and now lives in Gander. Happy 93rd birthday to Vera Chalk of Dead Man's Bay, now living in Gander. Cecilia Sr. also turned 93 earlier this month. She's from Red Harbor and lives in Marystown. Happy birthday. Wishing Rhoda Barrett of Old Perlican a very happy 96th birthday. Congratulations to Abel and Ann Clark. They're celebrating their 67th anniversary. Happy 50th anniversary to Grant and Juanita Keats of Bonavista. Happy anniversary to Lloyd and Charity Wagner, who were married in Happy Valley Goose Bay 50 years ago. And a happy 90th birthday to Alex Pelly of Bishop's Falls. Happy 90th birthday to Bill Rose of Grand Bank, now living in Harcourt. And greetings to Edna Boone of Botwood, who will celebrate her 100th birthday this Tuesday. Happy 90th birthday to Jerry Feltham. Happy 90th birthday also to Flo Tippett of Catalina, now living in Stephenville. Phil and Bridget Hanrahan of Marystown are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary today. Congratulations to Garland and Margaret Foss of Bay Vert. It's their 56th anniversary. Happy 52nd anniversary to Art and Elsie Howell. And a happy 55th anniversary to Wesley and Ann Shepherd in Cornerbrook. Congratulations to Claude and Marjorie Russell of Carmenville. They are celebrating 54 years of marriage. And a happy 60th anniversary to Lorne and Don Jacobs of Lewisport. Happy 50th anniversary to Fred and Hilda Lawrence of Chamberlain's. And congratulations to Sid and Rosalie Stiles of Stephenville on their 52nd anniversary. Happy anniversary to Audrey and Harry Whitehorn of Steady Brook celebrating 60 wonderful years of marriage. Happy 90th birthday to Ellis Hodder of Greats Cove, now living in Old Perlican. Happy birthday to Caroline Day of Grand Bank, celebrating her 94th birthday. Birthday greetings to Mabel O'Quinn, who is celebrating her 94th birthday. She's from St. Phillips, but now lives in Shea Heights. Happy 97th birthday to Ellen Rose Leonard of Placentia. And a happy 92nd birthday to Margaret Johnston of Goulds. And a happy 58th wedding anniversary to Alan and Shirley Poole from Milltown, now living in Bishop's Falls. Congratulations to Daphne and George Cutler of Trinity, who are celebrating 57 years of marriage. Happy 50th wedding anniversary to Carl and Violet Tilly. And 56th anniversary greetings out to Leighton and Bernice Patey of Paradise. And wishing a happy 60th anniversary to Fanny and Henry Turnbull of Charlottetown, Labrador. Wayne and Norba March of Lady Cove, Random Island are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Congratulations to Lloyd and Vera Bennett of Cornerbrook, now living in Clarenville. They're celebrating 53 years of marriage. James and Marjorie Cody of Grand Falls, Windsor are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary today. Wishing Joan Costello of Fairyland a happy birthday. She turns 93 today. And birthday greetings to Jim Ransom from Burnt Islands, now living in Port Basque. He turned 92 yesterday. Congratulations to Jim and Maud Stobridge of Cornerbrook, who are celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary. Jim also celebrating his 92nd birthday, so extra cake for you. And a happy 56th anniversary to George and Bernice Clements. It's also George's 70th birthday. Anniversary greetings to Abe and Lois Rideout from Buren, who are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. And congratulations to Don and Ruby Bragg of Pillies Island. They are celebrating 66 years of marriage. 
Happy 60th anniversary to Marie and Damien Ryan of Paradise. Best wishes to Margaret Barrett of Old Perlican, who is celebrating her 90th birthday today. Birthday greetings to Jim Yetman from Buckins, who turned not who turns 90 tomorrow. Happy birthday to Muriel Anderson of Makovic, now living in Happy Valley Goose Bay. She turned turns 101 this Sunday. Happy 91st birthday to Isaac Chambers of Flower Cove. And happy 50th anniversary to Sam and Sharon Barnes of Grand Bank. Happy birthday to Doug Furno. He turns 91 tomorrow. Congratulations to Ernest and Jesse 80 of Mount Moriah. They celebrate 62 years of marriage. Happy 50th wedding anniversary to Summy and Nellie Duffiness. Hope I got that right from Three Rock Cove. Sandy and Laverne Campbell of Charlottetown, Labrador are celebrating their 52nd wedding anniversary today. Happy 56th anniversary to Edgar and Julie Higdon of New Harbor. Happy 50th wedding anniversary to Patsy and Alvin Greening of Musgrave Town. Happy 65th wedding anniversary to Clarence and Geraldine Butler of Conception Bay South. Happy 54th wedding anniversary to Daisy and Jim Ford of Appleton, now living in St. John's. Happy 59th wedding anniversary to Arthur and Madeline Snow of Botwood. And happy 93rd birthday to Emma Higdon of Cornerbrook. Fine crowd. Yes, and a lot tonight. Uh, congratulations <laughs> to all of you. Now it's time to have a look at our viewer photo of right. the day, and it's a beauty. Just check this Not sunrise bad. out. What I love about this uh, photo is not just how beautiful it is, but how remote it is. Okay, that's uh, what Carolyn Stokes would call a clue. This is it Labrador? Was taken okay, way I win. Whoa. Up in Hebron. Isn't that cool? We don't get many viewer photos from that neck of the woods, so thank you very mm. much to Jenny Gear. Uh, of Northwest River for sending that one in. A lot of magenta in there, right? That's Gorgeous. absolutely stunning. And Carolyn always likes getting your pictures, so if you've got them. Yes, please send them in. Uh, email them to nlphotos at cbc.ca. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Love it. So, uh, of course, getting time to, are you hungry yet? Oh, I'm always hungry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, if you like food and you like music, uh, come back right after the break because you have a pretty special treat for you yes. that you're not going to want to miss. A big event that was held. Mm -hmm. We call these encore performances. Yes, tasty tunes. I don't know if you were there, but uh, yeah, we're going to have we're gonna a take you back special there. encore yeah. after the break. Stay tuned. Some great food from the great chefs as well as some great music from a whole bunch of performers. We'll set that up for you right after the break.
Welcome back to Here Now Music and mouth-watering aromas filled the air at the Tasty Tunes this past March. The big CBC Feed and Ale event took place at the Delta Hotel and featured some of the city's finest musicians and some great chefs. Yes, the singers were Katie Baggs, Janet Cull, Geraldine Hollett and Sherry Ryan. And they were accompanied by Steve Miller, Karen Bulmer and Andrew Dale. And special thanks to the chefs, of course, mm -hmm. Andy Bulman, Christopher Joy, Amy Anthony, Jessica Thompson and Daryl Hammond. Yeah, and that led to uh, almost $7,000 being raised for the Community Food Sharing Association. So enjoy the show yeah. and your long weekend. Cause you are my everything And boy, this is true
Congratulations. take you to the forest with its flower fallen leaves and I'll show you the place where I saw love's face appear broken and shining with tears and I'll tell you all I know I'll tell
Tougher, not pain, not hunger could turn you away from the sea. You don't have a choice, so I won't raise my voice when you wake every morning and leave. And how many times did my heart skip inside my chest as I slept by the phone? And how many times has this window held? My breath as I'm thinking of you all alone. Will you swing me around, lift my feet off the ground? Don't ever let me go. Sway to and fro, and though you don't know, whisper to me each night. I always make it back home. It's the fall of the year and the skies have cleared I'm breathing a sigh of relief Though winter brings comfort to this house Our number we've added one become three Once she was born in the twilight of morn You held my hand as I cried Eighteen years later Sisters, we made her. You looked in your daughter's blue eyes. I know they all said that my heart made no sound when they hoisted me up on the bow. But I can recall a face in the squall. It's the face that looks back at me now. Will you swing me around with my feet?
clouds are parting, the sun is rising, and the moon it still lingers past dawn. Your voice in my ear, I can hear it so clear, says Thini, take the wheel and hold on. Oh, you take the wheel and hold on, while I swing you around, lift your feet off the ground, I won't ever let you go. Sway to and fro, and though you don't know, whisper to me each night, will you swing
fall away, fall away. You watch your own familiar hills fall into the sea. Wooden ships, wooden ships, from your Iron Age port sail to. your own familiar hills fall into the sea. Thank you. Drifting like a bottle at sea Tossed upon a storm and now its message Has to find its way to you and me And it has to find its way Something like that's bound to keep you hanging until what's meant to be will be.
Something like that is bound to keep you hanging until what's meant to be will be. The answer to a long awaited question drifting like a bottle.